What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're here to talk about my favorite guns. We got this idea because we just recently hit a million subscribers, and I'm a little blown away by that, my wife's a little blown away by that, and we've been working toward this for seven years. So we were thinking about what video to do on Sunday, and we decided to give you what you've been asking for. We decided to go through my favorite guns I've ever had on the channel. Out of the seven years I've been shooting firearms on YouTube, we have compiled a list of my 10 favorites. We actually had 20, <laughs> and I couldn't really knock it down. So we're gonna end up doing two lists, so there's gonna be a second one that comes out two weeks from now. But these are gonna be my 10 favorite, and then there'll be 10 more. These guns are chosen basically just by me, obviously, because they're my favorite guns. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what philosophy of use, and the reasons, and the price, and all the stuff. I'll give you all the information that you need, but remember, this is just my video with my opinion, as it always is. With that being said, let's get right into it with number 10. We are gonna be talking about my my Winchester 1873. Now, this was a gun that I've wanted my whole life. This is made very famous in the West. This is one of those guns when I was a kid, my dad would always say, people think the Colt Single Action won the West, but the Winchester really did. And you could see how it would. In a time of freaking muzzle loaders and cap and ball, you had all of a sudden a rifle that could shoot relatively quickly with a high capacity at a good intermediate distance. It's one of the most compact, lightweight, reliable, and durable firearms made at the time, and it still holds true today. Uh, this gun is uh, a 357, and it's the case-hardened Winchester model, which I'm a big, big fan of. It runs one of the slickest actions in lever action. As far as like a lever action goes, if you want to get speed, uh, the 1873 is certainly one you'd want to go for. Still very popular in cowboy action matches because of that. Now, because it's fast, and because it's reliable, and because it's pretty accurate too obviously a gun like this even 150 years later would still work very well for ranch defense and home defense which I actually still use it for occasionally we've shot plenty of things with this and I will continue to so 150 years later this thing's absolutely still kicking it's still looking good and it's definitely one of my favorites and it's for sure my favorite lever action rifle in at number nine we're gonna talk about one of my absolute favorite guns as they all are, uh, we're gonna be talking about the Wilson Combat CQB 1911. Now this is one of the first dream guns I ever bought. I'm a big 1911 fan. I get that from my dad. My dad loved 1911s. It was the first handgun I ever shot. So I obviously have kind of stuck to them my whole life. I like the trigger. I like the battery of arms. The grip fits me very well. I'm a bigger guy and the grip fits great. Uh, I, this one's in nine millimeter because I get 10 rounds instead of seven, which I like that better. I also prefer nine millimeter for the economic value of it. I can buy more, I can shoot more. I'm not one of those guys that likes the one shot, one kill. I like to shoot all freaking day. <laughs> so uh, obviously I can shoot faster, I can shoot more with nine. That's the way I went. Uh, lighter recoil, and this gun shoots amazing. Uh, guaranteed two inches at 50 yards. Wilson Combat is one of the best makers of firearms in the entire world, and certainly one of the best 1911 makers, and this is kind of their flagship model. We have two 3,000 rounds for this gun, and I i don't know if I've ever had a malfunction that wasn't related to ammunition. It doesn't need that much lube, and it's certainly the most reliable 1911 I've ever fired. It also has an inverted crown on the barrel, it has a barrel bushing, and it has a front fiber optic with the blacked out rear, my favorite sighting setup. And then I do have a Wilson Combat extended magazine release because you only get 10 rounds and you're gonna be popping the magazines in a lot. Uh, classic 1911 with no real frills, no rail, and no optic. I wanted it to look classic but perform like a rock star. Now this gonna run you uh, quite a bit of money. I think these go around for 25 to 3,000 dollars. But if you're in the market for a relatively good 1911, it's worth it. Hell, you only have two hands. You can only shoot one at a time or two, depending on how talented you are. But instead of getting a whole bunch of Glocks, maybe you should look at this. Now, in at number eight is gonna be my boomstick. <laughs> if anybody's ever seen Army of Darkness, great movie. I might be dating myself a little bit, but this is the Mossberg 590. Woo! 
Now there's a ton of these. There's a retro, there's this guy that I believe is the A1 with the lug on it and the heat shield. This one is my favorite just because of how sexy it looks and I think this comes for about 800 bucks, but the standard Mossberg 88 or Mossberg 500 will do as well. That's built off a very similar action. The dual rails here make the pump more reliable in my personal opinion, everything works great. I like the Tang safety over the standard trigger safety because it's ambi and I like to run it with my thumb. And this is for sure the most reliable pump gun I've ever owned. The Mossberg 500 series is also the most produced shotgun I've ever made, so you can find any part or accessory that you want. You can put dots on it, you can put shotgun cards on it, different stocks. I'm gonna keep all this uh, the way it is because I, got, I like the way it came out of the factory. That being said, they're very versatile in their use. You can get tons of different barrels for them, slug barrels, 18 inch barrel for uh, home defense or you could even do a like 24 inch barrel for duck hunting bird hunting and shit like that so maybe the most versatile gun on the table and it's under a thousand bucks and it looks sexy as fuck and it shoots great as well and obviously the 12 gauge will take care of anything in north america if you're worried about anything from geese up to bear this will do it for you in at number seven my piece my carry gun uh, this is my favorite little carry gun of all time. It was really close between this and the Glock 43X. You might see that on the next one, spoiler alert. Uh, but the M&P Shield Plus uh, came out last year and I've been shooting it and shooting it, carrying it and carrying it, and this thing is just amazing. <laughs> I'll take that. So this is my M&P Shield Plus, however, this is not only the performance center, because I like bougie shit, but it also has been done uh, by Floyd's, and they did this optic system for me here, the gun is ported, and I have tons of uh, real estate there to run the gun. Now that I put the optic on there, I wanted to have extra uh, serrations on the front, because it's kind of harder to get to the rear of the gun to rack the slide, so I wanted to be able to pinch, and I can do that now. It's a performance center trigger, three inch barrel, super lightweight it's like 20 some ounces 22 ounces or something like that and you get a great capacity of 12 plus one and a very shootable platform and this is the fastest and most accurate uh, carry gun for the money in my opinion you can get in these performance centers for like six seven hundred dollars and it's a freaking great buy another possible contender would be the sig p365 spectre comp over it's double this money and honestly i'm carrying this so you can tell which one i would choose now i love smith as a company i love the shield so for me this is a no-brainer in at number six, we're gonna have our first PCC. We're gonna go with the JP5. Now, I had thought about doing the MP5. The MP5 is one of my all-time favorite guns by a landslide, and it was so tough for me not to put it on this list, but I did choose the JP5 because I chose it in real life. I actually don't shoot an MP5 in PCC competition or in two-gun competition. I shoot this. And that's because this is not only the same system in the uh, SP5 or MP5, the roller delayed system, but the JP5 actually comes with AR15 ergonomics and controls, which I absolutely prefer over the SP5 or MP5. Now, it does have the same or less recoil because not only do you have the roller delayed system, but you have an adjustable system in it so you can tune it to your particular ammo type, but you have more real estate out front. You have that phenomenal JP barrel, which you literally could not get more accurate. This is twice the accuracy of an MP5, if not more. Uh, these pattern great at 50 yards by comparison to a lot of pistol caliber carbines. This was actually designed specifically for competition and came out this year, as opposed to like the MP5, which is like 60 years old. So it has a bit of a jump on it in all fairness. But we can have my favorite stock, we can have my grip, and then we can even have a quality trigger in it. For all those who don't know, they don't have the SP5 and maybe just play video games with it. It was originally designed as a submachine gun and it wasn't designed in a pistol caliber carbine. So the reset on the trigger and the trigger itself is not great so the uh, GP5 fixes that so if you're only running semi-auto you can shoot this significantly faster and I like that also the gun happens to take Glock mags which is about you can probably get two to one or maybe even three to one compared to SP5 magazines and they're readily available everywhere oh and they go on your Glock which is nice too in a number five my favorite revolver now I don't shoot this much but it certainly is my favorite gun to look at besides maybe my 1873. And I know I shit on single actions right at number 10 there, but that doesn't mean I don't love them. I absolutely do. I just have to be honest when, when I say that if I was picking something for self-defense, it's gonna be a shoulder-fired weapon over a handgun, especially if they fire the same caliber, which they do. 
That's not 45 long colt though. Both of these are chambered in 357 or 38 special, which allows me to get modern ammunition from any store and shoot it in my classic 150 year old guns, which I like a lot. This is actually a Colt single action Gen 3 here. And as you can see, it's got the standard seven and a half inch barrel, which looks very cool and classic, but it happens to be engraved and case hardened. And it also happens to have ivory grips because it's got that Ric Flair drip mixed with some fucking Old West style, and I'm a huge fan of this gun. Everybody that sees this like can't wait to shoot it, and only a select few actually do, because we put just about under 100 rounds through this over the course of me owning this. That being said, it's absolutely in my top 10, and if I can only pick 10 guns, this is coming with me for sure. But for practical use, as far as revolvers go, there'll be a couple on the next list that I think you guys might like a little better, and it'll be a little cheaper, because this guy was not cheap. I'm not even gonna tell you how much it was, because it'll make you cry. In at number four, we got this big motherfucker right here. We got the Sig Spear. Now this is the Sig Spear Heavy in 7.62 by 51, or for you Americans out there, 308. And the reason why I put this on my list is because I've been shooting this for a thousand round review, and I gotta tell you, my previous entry would have been the SCAR 17. I've shot that literally forever, but my buddy Nick and I have been shooting them back to back, and I can tell you with all certainty that this is better than the SCAR 17. And that sucks for me to say, because right up until a couple days ago, that was gonna be on this list. But you need a long gun, you need a 7.62, and I gotta tell you, if I'm going long distance, I'm going semi-auto, because Ricky Bobby likes to go fast, and I, for whatever reason, shoot just as good with semi-automatics. <laughs> I don't know if I'm used to the era controls or what, but the Sig Spear is, in my opinion, the next evolution of the, the DMR, and I really am a huge fan of this. We're gonna have a thousand round review here shortly. Most of the shooting is already wrapped up. I still have to do the CQB portion, which is where I'm gonna put an EOTech on this and shoot it super fast in like AR-15 drills. Uh, but we already shot this at 500 yards. We shot this at 200 yards. We've shot it prone, kneeling, standing all kinds of stuff with a whole bunch of different ammo. It's unbelievably reliable. It has an adjustable gas system. The rail doesn't need to be fixed or moved or anything right from the factory like the SCAR does. It also comes with a whole bunch of nice modular uh, features on it that the SCAR doesn't. It's ambi, it can use SR25 mags, and overall it is just as accurate and as fast, if not more so. And it also comes with a set of AR controls so you don't have to learn anything new and a non-reciprocating charging handle. Now I know the SCAR comes with a non-reciprocating charging handle now because mine has one, but most of them are still reciprocating and by far this is a much better system overall. And if I could do it over again, I would buy this over the SCAR, guaranteed. In at number three, we have my buddy. My BCM 11.5. If I had to pick one rifle, one rifle to rule them all, if I could have nothing else in the rest of my life, it would certainly be this. Uh, this is my BCM 11.5, BCM receiver, rail and barrel with gas block and vertical grip. It's got a BCM Mod 1 stock on it and it has a Magpul XL grip, but the internals of this have changed a great deal and that is the actual JP system in it, the JP lightweight carrier with the JP buffer tube there. And that is because it lowers the reciprocating mass and it helps out with follow-up shots a great deal. Suppressors, especially light ones like the canuter valve can sometimes put a lot of back pressure. So putting an adjustable gas block helps with that, but all, also having my uh, same competition system in this as I do my competition ARs feels the same when I shoot it and it hasn't decreased reliability ability at all. And I can't stress enough, this is my home defense gun. If you're going to do that for home defense, you're going to have to vet it through thousands and thousands of rounds, which I have. And the good news is that's a fun process, but this is an incredibly lightweight gun coming in a little over five pounds, surefire scout light suppressed. So your ears don't blow out in case you have to use it inside. I usually have a T-Rex arm sling on here as well. And then I have a radian 45 degree safety because it's fast and I like that. And then the same Geisley super enhanced trigger as all the other ARs that I have. Basically, most of the ARs I have have the same ergonomics, and this one included. However, this one's designed very specific to shoot 100 yards and in. If you're gonna have a self-defense situation of any type, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna be 100 yards and in, so that's why I would take this guy. That being said, we've shot this out to two and even 300 yards, and it handles itself just fine. The 11.5 gives it just enough dwell time to be reliable, less hard on the parts compared to a 10.5, and it's just kind of that sweet spot for me for a shorty gun. Because you don't want to go too long and then put a suppressor on it, then it feels unwieldy. This is a nice, handy, uh, quick little gun that my wife can use and that I can use in case we need to. So I love this freaking thing. It's lightweight and it's super universal in its application. All right, in at number two, we're gonna have kind of a tie, maybe a plus one, 
Twofer? Yeah, twofer. A twofer. Because 11 doesn't fucking sound as good. It's <laughs> why there's two. <laughs> so, well, number two is technically going to be my Atlas Ares. Now, this was the gun I helped uh, collaborate with Atlas on, and it is one of my shining achievements. This was a brainchild of mine. I wanted to make the world's best defensive pistol. That was kind of the concept behind this guy. So, I wanted a 4.25 inch ported 2011 from Atlas Gunworks. Uh, my boy Adam over at Atlas Gunworks, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best gunsmith in the world, and he put his heart into this, and he really achieved something. Now, this gun is very expensive. It's not for most people. It's a limited run, but it is my personal favorite 2011, and it has a rail on it, so I use it for home defense, and it has a commander size grip with a capacity of 15 or 17, or however much you wanna go, because it takes 2011 magazines. Combat hammer, SRO with raised sights, giving you everything you need to shoot fast, accurate, and it's stupid reliable. We have 2,000 rounds through of this now. I competed in a two-gun match with this uh, because my other gun didn't work, and this was my carry gun at the time, and it worked all the same. So uh, I would consider this a short enough and light enough to carry and certainly uh, quick and accurate enough to be a home defense gun. So as far as a do-it-all gun goes, if money is no object, this is it for me right here. But if money is an object, no problem, because for the small pennies price of $2,000, you can get the Staccato C2, which does almost everything that the Ares does. Not quite as fast, not quite as accurate, doesn't look quite as good, but it's about a third of the price. <laughs> what can I say? So if you want to get into the 2011 uh, compact, I would recommend this completely. We've got 2,000 rounds through this guy as well, and as you can see, it has the exact same philosophy of use. It's kit out the exact same way. You could certainly use this for everything you could use that for, with really no diminishing in returns. You know, the shooter really makes the gun in all fairness, and a better shooter is always gonna shoot a shittier gun better than a really poor shooter shooting a great gun. That being said, there's the small measure of success that you can purchase, uh, and you won't see much of an improvement with Ares, but you will see some. That being said, the Staccato is a is an absolutely amazing gun, and I would have no problem defending my life with this gun. As a matter of fact, they are interchangeable in our defensive uh, rotation. So, big fan of the Staccato as well. Now, number one here, you guys know what's coming. You know what it is, the CZ Shadow 2. The CZ Shadow 2 is my first love as far as handguns go, and I've never fell out of love with her just like my wife. And I gotta tell you, this thing shoots better than almost anything at its price point for almost everybody. A few people don't like it. I actually know my, my buddy Tim doesn't like them. That being said, he shoots at Atlas in competition, so it's kinda hard to come down from the top of the mountain. You know, $7,000 gun to a measly $1,000 gun. <laughs> but the Shadow 2, in my opinion, gives you the best bang for your buck on the entire market market of firearms. I've been shooting them for years. They're the most reliable guns I've ever shot in competition. The fucking thing never lets me down. Never. Every time I shoot a match with this thing, I never have a malfunction. It always works, and the bullets always go where I want them to go. Now, I can mess up aiming the thing, but this thing's going to shoot true no matter what. We have a 4.8 inch slide with internal slide rails, making this reciprocating mass very low and the uh, recoil impulse very low. That maximized by primary machine who, who did my slide and added my optic, uh, very, very low reciprocating mass and very heavy dust cover out the front. The gun comes out at about 46 ounces, making it pretty heavy for most people, but I'm a pretty big guy and I handle this thing relatively well. Double single action trigger. Now for most people that would be difficult, but I'm very accustomed to that. The first gun I shot in competition was after all a shadow and upgraded pretty immediately to a Shadow 2. So we've been doing this damn thing for a while. I've owned this particular gun for like five years, but I've been in the shadows for a decade. Very good undercut. You can throw lock grips on there. My personal favorite grip company. Give a shout out to them because they make some of the grippiest grips of all time, and I like that a lot. 25 lines per inch checkering on the front and rear with one of the best, if not the best, beaver tail in the business. I freaking love this gun. It shoots better than almost any gun in my collection, and I have to go up to literally like custom guns in order to beat this thing, and this happens to be legal in production. It happens to be legal in carry optics, and you just feel like an absolute demon when you shoot this thing, and I know it's gonna work with any ammo I use, with any mag I use, and for that, how could it not be number one? If you wanna see more content like this, if you wanna see the second list, let me know in the comment section below. We're gonna make it anyway, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this, and hopefully you'll enjoy that one in a couple of weeks. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support your local shelters, and remember to recycle. And thanks everyone for subscribing. Man, I can't believe we're at a million.
Oh, fine, three. I don't know. Silver three. Ten plus one. I fucked up. You're supposed to, that's your only job, count. It's my only job to count, <laughs> and I didn't even do that correctly. That and, you know, film and look beautiful. And be they don't know I look general. beautiful. But I do. In at number three. <laughs> 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 Fucking owl from, like, the Tootsie, Tootsie Roll commercials. One, two, three. 